I think we've gotten to the point where most of our clients do see the value of YouTube ads. But one thing they're still struggling with is the creative. A lot of our clients still can only provide us with horizontal videos. And while they can still work, they're not reaching the full potential. So that's why I want to talk about vertical and square videos. We will go over the specs needed, show you what they can look like when they do show up as ads, and then talk about some of the ways that we like to implement them within our current ad groups. The first thing I want to show you is why it's important to have dedicated square and video creative. And to do that, I took some video grabs from my phone. So here I'm just going through YouTube shorts where I know it should be a vertical video creative. But in the first ad we see for a mobile game, I'm fairly confident that they are not using vertical video. So if you just watch the border, look for stuff that gets cut off. If I stop it right here, we see one example. And while this is just a minor case, I've seen people and words get flat out cut in half because if you don't have video that fits the ad space, Google does have the right to crop it or try to use some AI enhancements to make it look as best as possible. And I may have to fast forward a little bit, but once we actually get to the end of this ad, I'm going to pause it again. While it's small, we see that the framing of the words and the app icons are a little off center. The guy in the lower left is a little cut off and even the phone is not fully centered within the video. So my guess is that it's still cropped, doesn't look horrible by any means, but it's also not dedicated video creative. Again, could be wrong. Let's look at another example. Here's another example of an ad that I'm fairly confident was originally horizontal and Google's making their edits. If you watch this a couple times, you may have to go back on your own. You know, the main thing there is French fries. And there's a couple points where the French fries are almost not even on the screen. But if I go to a certain point of this video, see the user is not even on the screen. It's just an odd framing. Even though it's minimal, you can tell. And then when you get to the very end, we see it's just off center and it looks a little weird. I said it last time, it's minor, but I see a lot worse pretty often. Let's look at some good examples. Here are a couple examples. First for Airbnb, everything looks pretty centered. Nothing appears to be cut off. Messaging is centered perfectly within the video and the ad. There's some call to actions, and then I'm skipping along to the next one. Here we get an app install ad from Microsoft. Everything looks perfectly centered. I don't see any additional text or image components surrounding the main visual, and then ends with a nice logo. So hopefully you could see why it's important to have dedicated vertical and square video. Now let's get into specifics of how the ad could appear for each of the different formats. The three images we see on the screen right now are for vertical video in different player modes. If you see in the very top, vertical video needs to be a 9 to 16 ratio. So the image on the left is showing you how vertical video can appear when someone is in full screen mode. In the middle, it's still vertical video, but the blue portion is how the video is cropped at the initial ad impression. And then the image on the right shows how the cropped portion will appear with the ad impression. And then below will be the YouTube channel name and stuff related to the watch page. Let's look at square video. Here are three images for square video in the different player modes and at the top, and hopefully you know what a square is, so it needs to be a one-to-one -one ratio. On the left, that's how square video will appear in full screen mode. Notice the big black bars on the top and the bottom. And sometimes those can have video enhancements where they take your current video and they blur it out a little bit and they put it at the top and the bottom. You'll see that a lot in video ads. That could potentially happen here. Notice that the center looks exactly the same because with square, there won't be any cropping. So when we go to the right image, the video ad will appear in full. Now for this set of images, Google describes viewer engagement with the YouTube app. So for both vertical and square videos, users have the ability to keep scrolling, whether it's a short, Within the feed, reviewing related content underneath the video, we see from the left image to the center that the video is cropped. So as a user is scrolling, YouTube can crop the video to a one-to-one -one ratio. This allows the user to interact with other features within the YouTube app. If you're using Square, you're fine. But for vertical, there is a specific sweet spot. YouTube calls it the safe zone. I call it the sweet spot. I mean the same thing. Now, depending on which campaign objective and video subtype you select, Plus, the YouTube app having the ability to make the video fit within specific dimensions for certain players, your ads can appear in a variety of different placements. Google says that your vertical video ads can appear as in-stream ads, in-feed ads, and YouTube Shorts ads. Now, besides those placements, they could be on a mobile device, on desktop, or on TV screens. Not only that, in a variety of those placements, most likely you have seen certain things like call to action extensions subscribe buttons, brand name overlays, your YouTube channel image overlays, 
If you've attached a product feed to the sales campaign objective, there could be product overlays within here. So because of that, more things can appear on your video ad, even if the user is in full screen mode. So this red portion that's in the image is the safe zone where any visual that's within the red image is guaranteed not to have anything cover it. No words, no logos, no products, no Google pop-ups. So the ideal 9 to 16 ratio is the 1080 by 1920 resolution that's called out in the black box within the image. If you're sticking to that pixel resolution, then you need to have a 288 pixel border on the top, a 672 pixel border on the bottom, a 48 pixel border on the left, and a 192 pixel border on the right. This could take some very clever planning with your video editing tool, but if you need to make sure a specific product visual, actor emotion, value message, sales message, whatever. If you need to make sure the most important part of your video is always on the screen, you need to keep it within the red safe zone. Now let's go and hop into Google Ads and talk about a few more things. I just clicked create a campaign. And as always, you do have to pick a campaign objective. And over the years, we've lost control in many of these campaign objectives of where our ads could appear. And it's important to review this to have another reason to solidify why it's necessary to have dedicated square and vertical video creative. Local store visits, that's Performance Max now. App promotion, you can add videos. And as we saw in the examples earlier, app promotion is gonna be heavily mobile. Now awareness and consideration does have video. And if you look at the subtypes, if you're focused on getting video views, shorts ads, it's definitely a placement. Audio-based ads, not too much of a concern, but even the other two options, when we're looking at in-stream or bumper ads, definitely see desktop and mobile. So having a good variety of video with this campaign objective is going to be important. Now sales, leads, or website traffic, that's going to be your video action campaign objectives. Make sure you have your conversion selected, and then we get to choose our objectives, and then I'm going to click continue. I'm doing this just so we can look at the network settings for a video action campaign. Again, besides sales, it is for leads and website traffic. Now within the network setting for a video action campaign, we cannot uncheck these boxes. For video subtypes, it is what it is. So this means we are locked in to showing our ads on Google's video partners. And Google flat out says that a large portion of their video partners inventory is vertical focus. So if you're running a video action campaign, it's borderline crucial that you have video assets that really fit square or vertical. Not only that, Google also states, and this applies to all objectives, that vertical video could also show up on desktop devices. It's based on the individual user's behavior and how they may typically watch YouTube on their desktop. So for this video, as I X out of this, I'm not going to show you how to design a square and vertical video. Maybe you have someone in-house who can do it, a partner, video software, there's AI programs out there, but Google does have a tool that can potentially help you with this. And since I said tool, of course, we need to go to tools, go to your shared library, and then go to your asset library. From here, click on new, go down to video, and there we see an option to create video. If you don't have the creative know-how or the budget to really pump out a ton of different video variants, especially all the different sizes, maybe check this tool out. Google has a variety of different templates within the asset library, both horizontal and vertical, that can at least give you something better than just a standard horizontal video for everything. You can see by just hovering over it, you get a little preview of what the video could look like and the time length that it's going to be. Scrolling down, let's try to find some other examples. And then underneath the examples, Google's giving you other assets needed to be able to finish this template. How many images needed, your logo, and certain text areas. And you can see in the preview where it's going to be. And I'm not going to go over all of them or a setup. I do have an older video talking about this video creation tool. You can watch it right here. But this could be a decent tool for your brand to start testing out different sizes if all you can get right now is just horizontal video. I'm going to close out of this again because then when we go into a campaign, I'm going to make sure I'm sorted by just video. And then let's just pick one. Go into an ad group. When we're creating ads, you can search for the video or paste in the URL of all the different varieties. I'm not going to go through ad setup, but let me jump ahead quick. I chose one horizontal and one vertical, and I'm including them within the same ad group. For most of our campaigns, we're combining all these different ad sizes, especially for video action campaigns where we really don't get to control where the user is going to be watching the ads. So because we lose that control, we want to make sure that we have creative in each ad group that can really satisfy all placements on all devices. And yes, I do understand we still get device control, 
but really the only device I've turned it off in campaigns has been TV screens. We just see too much value with running desktop and mobile. So because we know we're going to be running on those multiple devices in a variety of placements across several networks, we're going to be adding several videos, more than just two that you see on the screen right now. I want a handful horizontal. I want a handful of vertical all within the same ad group. It may seem a lot, but it gives us more insights and better testing. And now that Google has split view rate into in-stream, in-feed, and shorts, you'll be able to see the difference on these placements by the types of creative that you're using. You can also go up to your columns. Let's modify columns. And then we can choose viewability. You may want to look at your viewable rate and your viewable impressions. I'm going to click apply. I know we're not going to see anything here, but you'll get a better understanding of viewability by creative for each of these individual placements. Yes, we still review our audience performance to make sure that we're still getting in front of the right user with the right video message. But when I'm looking at the ads themselves, I'm also seeing how the different creative sizes are working by placement. And then finally, you can go to assets, go to videos, still within the same ad group. And just like any video campaign, doesn't matter what the ad size is, you can click on the videos and check out certain analytics. You'll need some time for it to run, but once it has enough data, you'll get some analytics of where people are dropping off. You'll be able to mark certain key moments to see, depending on the ad size in the creative, are people even watching it? Is the different video size making an impact? And that's just an additional analytics feature that can help you assess the value and the performance of any of your videos you're using within your YouTube ads. So hopefully you understand the importance of taking the time to make creative that fits all of the possible ad formats for video campaigns within Google Ads. As YouTube Shorts becomes a bigger inventory and Google keeps pushing YouTube Shorts more, Google's probably gonna favor the video campaigns that have better engagement on the vertical feature. Layer that in with the fact that we've lost the ability to turn off video partners in a vast majority of the ad campaign objectives. Vertical video is almost a necessity now. So start getting your vertical and square video creative, test it out in your campaigns, and let us know how it's working for you in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.